Yeah, f*** EA. Right? That's the popular opinion among gamers. EA has a reputation as this soulless, conglomerate machine that only pretends to develop and publish video games. But what they're actually doing is tipping you upside down and stealing your lunch money. Every. Single. Lunchtime. And you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm hungry and I've had enough. Whether it's releasing a game in an incomplete, if not completely broken state, or it's alienating a player base with temperamental online service, that means even in the pro circuit, one sec, even in the pro circuit, disconnections mean that pro players have to decide qualifiers by a game of rock, paper, scissors. That seriously happened. I'm going to run out of sandwich before I finish this bit. And you can bet that content is locked behind ethically questionable pay-to-win services that, you know, fair enough, might be okay in a free-to-play game, but in a £50 game, when you think about it, it's really just a dick move. And especially when it's not even played to win. It's play to potentially receive a game-altering item. And obviously most of the time you don't get anything. Look at it, you FIFA. So, EA is, how to word this correctly, a money-grabbing shit heap of a video game company. Or at least, that's the common belief, right? I'll be the first to admit that I've sharpened my pitchfork at my local EA witch hunt. For a company obsessed with exploiting money from gamers, it's surprising that EA Origin Access in 2020 is the cheapest video game subscription of the lot. At least the basic version is. EA has three video game subscriptions. The PC subscriptions are Origin Access Basic, which is £3.99 per month, or £19.99 a year, and Origin Access Premium, which is £14.99 per month, or £89.99 per year. There's also EA Access, which is also £3.99 per month and is on PS4 and Xbox One. So, for all the hate they get today, a lot of it justified, maybe we shouldn't let prejudice cloud our judgement over EA Origin Access in 2020. Or maybe EA's video game subscriptions are just another way to slowly but surely empty our pockets. Let's find out. By the way, this video is just covering the PC version, EA Origin Access, but there are only a few differences between the PC and the console versions. These games are on the console subscription only, so I won't be mentioning them beyond this mention that they're getting right now. And while we're in this little sidebar together, if you could drop a like on this video, if you like it, um, it would mean a lot to me. Um, head over to my channel for more content like this, and if you like all of that, please subscribe. That would be great. It's the best thing you could do. It will make my day. <laughs> too much, too much. All right, back to the video. There are 275 games on EA Origin Access in 2020, which is a lot. Too many, in fact, to reel off in one video. So what I'm going to do to begin with is cut away some of the fat. Now, there are certain games on there that I'm confident you won't play, either because they're not relevant or they're not very good. Origin has FIFA 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 all on the service. FIFA 20 is exclusive to Origin Access Premier subscribers, but FIFA 19 is recent enough that you can get your FIFA fix and not feel too out of the loop. As for the other football game, Madden 20 is available to both Basic and Premier subscribers, which is great, but it makes Madden 19 being on the service totally redundant. And there are a couple of other games like this. There's not much point playing The Sims 3, because The Sims 4 improved on the game in every single way. SimCity 2000 is fun for a hit of nostalgia, but I'd ignore 2003 SimCity 4 in favour of the 2013 reboot. And then there's the Battlefield franchise. Now, older versions of Battlefield won't become irrelevant like older versions of FIFA, because Battlefield have their own campaigns. But if you're playing it for the multiplayer, which I'm going to presume is the case because I don't think any of Battlefield's campaigns are particularly special, then the newer entries in the franchise are going to have a bigger player base, and therefore you should prioritise them. But this is also a good chance to highlight how stupid Battlefield's naming convention has been. Battlefield 3, released in 2011, is already the 12th Battlefield game in the series, so that's a bad start. Battlefield 4 was released in 2013. It was really awful on release, but now it's really good, and it holds up really well in 2020, so that one's fine. Battlefield Hardline was released next in 2015. Slight deviation from the previous two in terms of title, but nothing out of the ordinary for the series, 
we'd already had spin-off titles like Battlefield Vietnam and Battlefield Bad Company. So the title's fine. The, the game is awful, but, but the title's fine. Then we get Battlefield 1. The 15th entry in the series decides to be called Battlefield 1. And then, following that, we get Battlefield V. Not 5, V. Now this might seem like a minor thing to complain about, but it does annoy me quite a bit. I can at least understand the thinking behind Battlefield 1 because it returns to World War 1. Fine. But Battlefield V? Why V? Why not 5? Well, it can't be 5 because it's not a sequel to Battlefield 4. It's a sequel to Battlefield 1. So, actually it should be called Battlefield 2, but there's already a Battlefield 2, which was released in 2005 as the third Battlefield game, after Battlefield 1942 and Battlefield Vietnam. Yeah. So, the timeline goes Battlefield 1942, Battlefield Vietnam, Battlefield 2. But hey, why stop there? Let's keep going. Then it's Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Then it's Battlefield 2142, and then Battlefield Bad Company. So I guess Battlefield 1, released in 2016, is the first Battlefield game. Which, okay, okay, from a timeline standpoint, I can understand. But then why the f is this Battlefield V? V? Why have you switched to Roman numerals? It doesn't make any sense. This should be Battlefield 1, and this should be Battlefield 2. But it's too late for that. It's all f Despite its incomprehensible title, Battlefield V is the latest entry to the series and therefore I would imagine has the biggest player base. But it was criticised for an incredibly messy release, with large parts of the game being not available at launch and just generally the game not being very different to Battlefield 1. So maybe you should play Battlefield 1 is what I'm saying, but you know what, I don't care anymore. So I'm sorry for that slight digression and I'm sorry that I got a bit heated there, I apologise. Anyway, the other thing we can remove, or rather try and ignore, from the EA Origin Access list is DLC. I don't know why there are add-ons scattered across Origin Access. This clearly says Game List, so why is it filled with DLC? It's just, it's so confusing, it's unnecessary. Like is that your plan, EA? You think I'm fooled into thinking this is a game? It's just a Mini Cooper, why is this here? Okay, sorry, I'm getting angry at EA again, just need to decompress. Just. So here are the games on EA Origin Access that you shouldn't play because they f***ing suck. So no big surprise that Anthem features in this part of the list, but I had to play it just to be sure. Star Wars Battlefront 2 proved that EA can revive a game that the public have buried. So I waited two hours to download the 80GB file, played through a couple hour long tutorials and another hour of starter missions to decide that it's just a lot of air. No, I don't know what I expected. This is a weapons file. System pets technology. Cat. Great. And here's the ambush. Lick my boots, kiss my ring, and then my bum. I am Pathfinder. Not bad, little duck. Not bad. That is seriously the worst nickname. <laughs> Well, at least the actual Mass Effect trilogy is on here. So, my recommendation is, go and play that. Mass Effect 2 is genuinely one of the best RPGs ever made, so good job EA. It's the same you had to go and f*** it up with this one. Okay, I'm gonna stop throwing shade at EA now. As fun and as easy as it is to do, let's look at this seriously. There are quite a few games on Origin Access exclusive to Premier subscribers, some of which you might not have heard of, but let's start with the ones that you have. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is good. It's not amazing, but it's good, and that's exactly what EA needed from their most recent Star Wars game. I could pick holes in the story, complain about the blandness of the protagonist, and make fun of the AI. These things are all there, but you can have a perfectly good time playing Fallen Order. It looks great, as all of EA's Star Wars games do, and the lightsaber combat has that balance between flashy and substantial. Progression of items and abilities is decent, and the map while not the biggest, opens up as you learn new abilities. Was it a hugely memorable experience for me? Not really, and I don't think on its own it's worth an upgrade from Origin Access Basic to Premier. I've played a lot of FIFA over the years, more than I care to admit, to be honest. 
So here's my template for every entry into the FIFA series, so we don't have to review the game every year. FIFA, insert years, new ball mechanics, play unique animations, and smarter AI create the most authentic football game both on and off the pitch. Despite the gameplay tweaks, FIFA's game modes are the same as before. Career mode is a bare bones experience, still playing second fiddle to Ultimate Team, which continues to expertly tread the line between infuriating and addictive. Also, this year's OP cards are insert 80 rated cards that perform like 90 rated cards. A Plague Tale Innocence drops you in 12th century France and casts a plague of biblical proportions on your doorstep. The core gameplay of Innocence is the usual stealth mechanic of throw a distraction over there and sneak by that you've seen in every third person action adventure game, which for me grew tiresome as the game went on. But the game's beautiful design carries you through. If a game about hordes of flesh eating rats can be described as beautiful, I should also mention that you can play A Plague Tale Innocence on Xbox Game Pass. Need for Speed Heat is the latest crack at the whip for the franchise, looking as good as ever in a Miami setting with chilled daytimes and neon drenched nights. The gameplay quickly gets repetitive though, and mostly Heat just makes me long for a reboot of Need for Speed Underground 2. In Darksiders 3, you play as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse who sets out to destroy personifications of the seven deadly sins. It's an exciting premise, but one without a huge payoff for me. Combat is a standard third person dungeon crawler affair based around counters and dodges just like that game that I'm not going to mention because really why bother at this point. Darksiders 3 borrows a lot of inspiration from other games, making for a decent if uninspiring end product. And also the remastered version of Command and Conquer comes to Origin Access Premier subscribers on the 5th of June. Premier subscribers also get DLC and add-ons for some games. For Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Need for Speed, this amounts to cosmetic items, but there are other games where it's actual in-game content. So those games are Battlefield 1, Battlefront, the 2015 one, The Sims 4, Cities Skylines, Dragon Age Inquisition, and Plants vs Zombies. There's also a handful of indie titles that are available only to Premier subscribers. Wreckfest has a lot to offer, from a host of events and customization options to driver rivalries and a lot more, but its simplicity is what puts it at the top of this list of exclusives for me, because it just makes smashing into cars so fun and satisfying. Mabel and the Wood puts a twist on the Metroidvania genre, where you can barely lift your weapon and you can complete the game without killing a single enemy. Apparently, I definitely couldn't. Your shape-shifting abilities, morphing into ghosts and fairies and spiders, turn you into a deadly warrior and form the basis of the game's excellent movement. This is the police too, as you managing a police department, safeguarding the town's citizens by sending your officers to crime scenes. There isn't a lot of story to support your emergency services to-do list, but there's depth to building up your police force and keeping officers happy. Misfortune Hernandez is the unfortunate protagonist of Little Misfortune, an interactive narrative adventure where all your adventures come at the expense of this poor little girl. Little Misfortune's design captures a childlike imagination, but the game is grounded in real-world issues of abuse, explaining the importance of perseverance to great effect. Warhammer Chaos Bane is a typical hack and slash RPG set in the world of Warhammer. It does nothing innovative for the genre, but it does nothing overwhelmingly bad either. It doesn't hold a light to games like Diablo or World of Warcraft, but for Warhammer fans it's probably a worthwhile venture. Sparklight is a typical 8-bit roguelike that has you exploring procedurally generated caves, collecting components to create outlandishly fun weapons. And Farmer's Dynasty is a farming simulator that isn't any match for the self-titled series, but it does offer a social system that's, well, it's a bit creepy, to be honest, where janky sprite movements that make everyone look like that alien disguised as a farmer in Men in Black. All right, so I've covered unnecessary games, I've covered games that are bad, and now I've covered all the games exclusive to Premier subscribers. So here are the games that are good that you can get for the price of one crisp £20 note per year. Titanfall 2 is how you do mechs right. Do this. Not this. It's hard to say whether I prefer the fast and smooth acrobatic movement as a pilot, or I prefer stomping around 
in a mech having Transformers style battles. But Titanfall blends both together to make for absolutely thrilling fights. Initial matchmaking took me a while, as this game's been around since 2016, but once I was in a lobby, I didn't want to leave. It's fast paced, intense action, and I highly recommend jumping back in. Okay, so this game was awful at launch. We all know that. Content would take months to unlock through in-game currency, even for central Star Wars characters like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Combine that with the game itself being pretty broken, with loads of bugs and horrendous lag, and people were pretty angry. It caused this poor member of EA's social team to have the most downvoted comment in Reddit's history. And I'm one of those 668,000 downvotes, as you can see. But honestly, I think EA redeemed themselves on this one. The game is now in working condition, loot boxes only offer cosmetic items, and all in-game content comes via free updates. And there's a lot of additional content. The recent-ish Clone Wars update added Obi-Wan and Anakin, and an additional game mode, Supremacy, where large-scale battles can last hours. Battlefront 2 is now a great casual shooter that's super easy to pick up and play. And with the broken elements fixed, you can now appreciate the game for what it is, an incredibly detailed and beautiful recreation of the Star Wars universe. Also, the original Battlefront games are on Origin Access, so that's a bonus. Speaking of the original Battlefront games, a lot of titles from the golden era of Star Wars games are on here. There are classic games like Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, the Jedi Knight series, and Republic Commando, as well as games I've never heard of like Empire at War, Episode 1 Racer and Galactic Battleground Saga. Also there's The Force Unleashed, which was pretty good, and The Force Unleashed 2, which was pretty bad. If you can't choose which to play out of all of these, Knights of the Old Republic 2 is one of the best games I've ever played. The writing is tight, the characters have depth, the villains are brilliant, and the choice-based system built around the Jedi and the Sith is the best in any Star Wars game, and you can quote me on that. In fact, you can fight me if you disagree. You can debate over which of the Dead Space games are the best, but all of us are right, in a way, because they're all on Origin Access. So expect this kind of stuff multiplied by three. Who doesn't love The Sims? I mean, there's something in our DNA that responds to that act of playing God. Even if it has the worst title screen in the world, like, what is this? It looks like a page out of a magazine catalogue. The Sims 4 is the perfect light-hearted living simulator for many reasons and your reasons will be different from everyone else's. For some, it might be living out their dream as a renowned chef. For others, it's watching their grandchildren get married. For some, it might be buying their own plot of land and turning it into the biggest mansion on the street. Or for some, it might be woohooing as many people as possible in 48 hours and quitting before anyone gets pregnant. For me, it's trapping my sim in a room with nothing but that budget oven that's prone to overheating and just you're just seeing what happens. Ah, Nathan Nickel, you will be missed. He died doing what he loved, being trapped in a windowless prison. I really like the fluid, first-person free-running of the first Mirror's Edge, and this is my first time playing through the sequel, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and Mirror's Edge really is one of a kind when you get into the flow, but the combat, or rather lack of combat, is often enough to break that immersion, and I really don't understand why every bad guy just stands in front of you, waiting for you to approach them. Competition is fierce for your favourite Metroidvania, but Dead Cells might well be it. It's closer in pace to Castlevania than Metroid Prime, and I did feel a bit bogged down at times, but it gives the combat plenty of weight, along with a great variety of weapons and the inventive destruction you can perform when you combine them. You can also play Dead Cells on Xbox Game Pass. I mentioned this in my previous video, as Limbo is also available on PlayStation Now. Limbo offers nothing more than silhouettes, and offers nothing in terms of soundtrack or dialogue. And yet, it's story about a boy desperately trying to escape every hazard and monster out to kill him says an awful lot. And to cap off this list, here are five indie titles on Origin Access Basic that you might not have heard of. Next Machina is Wild. It's a twin stick arcade shooter that pulls no punches. Like, you start off thinking, okay, this is a nice warm up, then things are starting to pick up, then you're dodging flying pink death zones like a maniac shooting everything in sight, and you realize, oh, this is the end of level two. And you're on the beginner difficulty. And then you reach the final boss and you're like, what am I even looking at here? Like, what is happening right now? 
Its setting and style harks back to the prime of the 80s arcade and this is just great bloody fun. You'll find Detention as the only game in Origin's horror genre, which is strange given that all three Dead Space titles are on the service. Detention doesn't offer jump scares, but its 1960s Taiwanese school locale serves up plenty of tense moments, and it's a very good psychological horror. I liked how quickly Shio, Shio introduces you to its core platforming mechanic but it doesn't expand much further than whipping lanterns to get through increasingly tight spots. And you don't learn enough about the characters to make these dream sequences where you just walk to the right agonizingly slowly worthwhile. Sea of Solitude is a very personal tale about feelings of loneliness and isolation where your boat is the only vessel safe from your darkest inner dreams. And then there's Ultimate Chicken Horse, a silly little game where you fill a stage with traps and hazards to f*** with your friends while trying not to f*** over yourself. All that, and a fair bit more, for 20 quid. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. There are more Premier exclusives than I originally thought, and some of them are very good, but there's a big gap in terms of price between the two subscriptions, and there are a couple of things that stop me recommending Premier over Basic. One is that I don't think Premier's games are good enough to warrant spending £10 more a month or £70 more a year. Another is that PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate have deeper libraries and come at a cheaper price. And the final reason is that I think Origin Access Basic is low-key one of the best video game subscriptions you can get. And that's down to the price. Like £20 is at that upper limit of an amount you can spend without really thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, for me, if I have to spend £50, say, on something, I have to put a lot of thought into whether it's worth spending that money. But £20, I could spend at a restaurant or, you know, down the pub, if, if we could right now. <laughs> so seeing as we're all stuck indoors, why not spend that money on a year's subscription to all those games? You know, it's worth thinking about. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. EA... Origin Access and Uplay Plus, which my next video is going to be on, are kind of lesser known subscriptions versus the big boys like Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now, but they might be worth your money. So hopefully you've learned something from this video, and if you did, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this, and thanks for watching. Okay, bye.